uncharted territory. Emerging here for the first ranking final of his career, without doubt, it's the biggest match of his life. And his dad is with him here to watch. This talented 20-year-old is lean, keen and ready to roll. He's Wu Yizha. the former world champion, the former world number one, back to his very best and back in a big final for the first time in two years, bidding for the 24th ranking crown of his career. He's the Thunder from Down Under, Neil Robertson. Stirring introductions on a very big day for both of these two. Yes, Neil Robertson has to be regarded as a warm order, a short price favourite. But the history of snooker tells us that all-time greats have been favoured in finals and lost them. It's happened to Stephen Hendry, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and the man whose name is on the trophy, Steve Davis, and my co-commentator Joe Johnson knows Just all about that. <laughs> yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Yep, I was a massive underdog, that's for sure. He was well favoured. And as Phil Yates, favourites lose sometimes, not always. I just hope it's going to be a, a very good game. Good attacking play, good safety. Three yep. frames, you had a one, two, seven earlier. Thank you, settle down, please, and take your seats. <coughs> the 14th frame. Neil Robertson still we use it break. one away. I think the other thing to say is, of course, it's his white players strive for such big leads when they can. Neil Robertson, this afternoon, he was winning all those frames. He knew he had to win, <coughs> keep winning them. You know, there was no thing, well, I'll be five through or six through, they'll be OK, because you never know what sort of comebacks he's going to be up against. Now, that's an error. And he's been very lucky. So is the tide turning now, the, the run going? It was the first mistake he's made for a long time. And he got away with it, luckily. One. Oh. Wow. oh my goodness, <laughs> what a shot, what a shot, long straight ball like that, thudded into the back Bam of the pocket. He's played two absolutely stunning shots in a row here. I mean, look at the way he's opened these reds, the speed he got on the ball. That was sensational.
Well, I don't care how cool a character Neil Robertson is, he must be concerned watching this. Six. Within a couple of shots, who he is, he's given himself every chance to pull another one back. That's a good shot as well, because the blue's away from his spot. It's not a natural shot to play on the blue in open space like that when it's away from his usual position. It's A1. Now, you, you may have had a chat with his father or something and been very frustrated this afternoon. It's all coming out in a positive way tonight, though, isn't it? I mean, no-one's saying he's going to go on and win this, but it's, it's great to see the journey he's on. Yeah, and even if he loses now, and he hasn't yet, but one of the things people remember from this final is this, how he's playing here. 12. <coughs> Would have been so easy for the shoulders to slump and you're almost 7-1 down, so they're just going through the motions, but he found something very special here. Well, interesting shot to play because he played on the red below the pink, which just weaves its way through that gap and opens up the pink in the process. Eighteen. He had a few difficulties in that pocket early. I have to say that the afternoon session he missed three or four easy balls, but mercifully, that hasn't four. been the case tonight. Twenty-five. But he's able to hit through the ball, you know, and thud balls into pockets. He, uh, I can't think of too many players in the world game that do it better. It's a little delicate one sometimes that he has to rein himself in on. Well, he, of course, came and tried to sort of clear the table at the end of the last frame, Robertson, just to get a few shots, but he's back in that seat again. First red was sort of fired in his general direction, wasn't it, into, into the yellow pocket? Yeah, now he's just taking a little bit of time over this because he... He hasn't really met with a, a real problem, but he just needs to decide which red is the most effective to play. Gone away from his first thought. He couldn't see position, so he's doing all the right things. He's not just rushing into every shot. He's past that stage. He's, he's banging the match. Thirty-eight. Yeah, I mean, the opening red that Dave was speaking about, what a shot. And then the brown to follow it, where the cue ball gathered so much pace and just went into the reds and demolished them, really. Not really been able to clear the black spot. It's those two reds, they're not completely tying the black up, but they're just making things very awkward for him to land on the black, which would be the last piece of the jigsaw in a way. Done all the rest of it. Forty-six. Well, that's one way to do it. And it was very measured. Is there anything that's not so good about that shot? The ready cannon has just pushed into the six now, and they're awkward. Well, he's got 
53. To elevate the queue, I think he's got to play surely the red to left corner here over the top of a load of reds, unless something goes to the middle. Well, this goes to the middle. This is a delicate one again. close to getting another frame one but one more positional shot is required <coughs> showing great poise here he's not rushed into any of it he knows how well he's playing he's desperate to keep the break alive now if that red goes past the black he doesn't got to do quite as much positionally it must be tight be good to see down that line but it makes a huge difference if it does go Yeah, that will go all right if he's behind it. That flies. <laughs> Not quite facing the pocket right now. behind it, which would be easier, but it, this will certainly go if he hits it right. After this, and it's going to be eight six. Sixty five. Well, he's played on either the bottom red or there's a red in the middle of the bunch which might go. It's all very intricate. This break's been taking a lot of hard work. It's not so much if the red goes this time, it's can he see enough of it from the other red? Trace of side, maybe. 66. First shot of the night, you potted a long red and we said, it's what you got to do tonight, don't miss. And apart from the frame that he lost, he kind of hasn't. He's just completely flicked a switch here. This has been a, the most fantastic break, I mean, Whatever happens from here, he's already with snookers acquired. It's been absolutely stunning. The way that he's made it, the way that he's kept it going, the reds were open, but sometimes awkward. I mean, this is, he just drilled that in. And you can't see a frame played better by anybody in the world than this. It's been spellbinding stuff. Yeah, put together with the other frames he's won, this is as good as we've seen in the tournament, this spell. And now that it's 8-6 and how he's winning the frames, the comeback is well and truly on. 80. Of course, the question then is, the closer he gets to completing it, can he play with such freedom like this? We'll see, but the main thing is he's put himself in that position. Well, absolutely. I mean, for Neil Robertson, it's got beyond a joke. 86. His father... He is his father there, he's on the edge of his seat. Must be a very proud Excellent. man, whatever happens in this final. But this is, it's kind of turned everything around because he had a bad afternoon session. And he's been magnificent tonight. 94. Sunday night on UK television is so often about great drama. And I'm seeing another one here, and Wu Yizza. He's playing now the starring role. This black for his third century of the night. Oh, oh what a shame. What a shame that he's missed the break. And what a performance overall. Years are refusing to go. He's won four on the spin. And on Neil Robertson getting a big cheer as he comes back into the arena. Frame, his Robertson. highest break tonight, Robertson, is only 40. He did a lot of damage, of course, this afternoon. He finished with two centuries, but 40, his best effort. His opponent has had a string of breaks. It could have been a third century there, but the 95 has brought it back to 8 6. And he's actually in the match now, scored more points. Who is it? Yeah, 
just think what he's got to do now, if he can, A, keep putting balls like he is, but he's just got to keep the pressure on Neil Robertson, not do anything silly because surely he's feeling it. You know, he's not won for a while and he didn't expect this bombardment tonight, I don't think. No, because it's just night and day from the performance this afternoon. He's gone from a sort of 2 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10, we use it. Neil Robertson is at the point where he's trying to, desperately trying to take the sting out of things, you know, and just not get him out of his stride, but he's, nothing's working like that. It just comes down to the point, if Neil does get a chance, he's just got to take it, I think, and pop the balls before Ruiz can pop them. He just isn't really getting any table time at all. He's sitting in that chair watching all this go on. In all of the frames tonight that he's lost, Neil Robertson, he has played no part in. One of the frames, he, he's, he scored 33 points, but that was just after the frame was over and he was having a, a few shots. All the others, he's been just sitting in the chair, not putting a ball in any of them. Quite a good shot, but he has left this long red, and you know what that could mean. But from underneath that cushion, this would be a really difficult shot. Difficult pot with very little guarantees on getting onto a colour. Might be able to play the containing shot, but there's a red down there near the black spot as well, so... Not an easy decision, this. Well, it could be worse. If you, if you miss it by that far, you don't leave the red on.
covered the right side of the table. There may be just an edge or two he can see. But it's not very promising. You can see what Neil's doing. He's just trying to slow it down a bit. Take the edge off of his opponent who's been all over him, quite honestly. And hope that something comes his way he can take. If he hasn't got a safety shot, I suppose it's like anything else, he may as well try and pop one, but there's nothing easy here. Oh, oh goodness me. What is going on? One, it's one of the very few mistakes he's made. The red's gone in like a bullet into that top right. I suppose if he's going to launch one of the great comebacks, you need this to happen as well, on top of all the good. Wow. What a thing to happen. Robertson must have been about to get out of his chair, thinking this could be my opportunity. Not bound to get out of his chair again in the frame now. Yeah, I mean, there's like eight two up, you know. It's, we've, we've known Four. that turned around, but when you think of very very odd instances the stars have all got to align haven't they and the, the the run of the ball's got to change the standard's got to improve all sorts has got to happen five he kind of just gave a very cursory wave he didn't really seem all that sorry about it did he I can't blame him aren't we? I mean, it looked like a final that was petering out. It would have been a great story if Robertson had won easily the coronation, all of that. It's turning into one of the most memorable that we've seen in recent times. Of course, the last final went down to the last black, Judd Trump, with a great clearance against Mark Williams, but that had been a real nip-and-tuck affair. It's always a bit different when there's a comeback in terms of just the feeling in the room. Nineteen. The thing is, I mean, Neil Robertson had him in all kinds of trouble from that last shot, and uh, he looked for a long time, and he went for one. I don't blame him for going for one, because he couldn't see a shot. Neil had him tied up in knots there, until the red ended up going into the top right pocket from an outlandish fluke. They say fortune favours the brave, don't they? 24. I don't think he's got much of an angle here. He's to use a bit of force on this one. Well, he's playing a different red. This is tough. Five. The full range of shots are coming out tonight from Ruiza. We just caught a glimpse that the pink does parts those two reds to the left middle. Again, it's a very delicate little shot to hold for a red. Well, 
Well, it wasn't played delicately. At he can, when he can put his cue right through the ball in the way he did on that shot, he, he looks a very formidable player. The odd little delicate one, he doesn't hit so well. But at that kind of extra pace, he incredibly accurate. 37. Again, a bit of work to do here. 38. And he can play on the pink, the pink will go, goodness me. 45. 45. Back to this afternoon, some of the balls he was missing, particularly to middle pockets, as Neil mentioned earlier, you know, you just thought he's not coping at all. And he wasn't then, but whatever he did between sessions, it's worked. I'm sure his dad had a word. Go out and enjoy it. 50. He's certainly enjoying it now. There he is. I mean, the pair of them, who is and his father, must be very disappointed with how he played when you know he can play like this. And then he misses that one again. Where is it? There's something about that left middle, those little delicate shots. He puts all the difficult ones and misses the very odd easy one. It's amazing, isn't it, after all those pots, this he stays up. Well, it's the first ball in line play he's missed in a long time. And he hasn't won the frame from a fluke, but he's got a 50-point lead. Yeah, Neil is always pretty cool and pretty sort of pragmatic about things, but he must be getting a bit frustrated, mustn't he? He's getting... If ever there is a mistake made, he's still not getting a pot. He got lucky there as well. That was not as planned. He hit both reds. Although he has left something. Well, how's Neil Robertson feeling as he comes to the table here? We're about to find out. Interesting if you can control the cue ball here. It's edging over close to those two reds by the black spot. A little bit thinner than that. One. It's no good. He's going on. To these sort of shots, cold, isn't he? Very cold. Nothing that uh, he's seen for so long. He can't have any real flow to his game. Robertson, 
So five hours playing time. And what a fascinating stage this is. It was 8-2 to Robertson. It's 8-6. Williams have got the fluke. He made 50. Mr. Red. Where the balls are, if he leaves Robertson a chance, the clearance would be available. Looking at the plant, I think if the cue ball was directly in line with the two reds, it would be easier. The cue ball's a bit low, which means it's not so easy as all that to judge. He ended up hitting it very quickly. He's undeniably rattled. I don't think anyone in his position wouldn't be. Yes, and now a red's run safe to that left side cushion, which doesn't favour him, of course, trailing in the frame. <laughs> and even that shot, the red flicked the yellow and now isn't possible anywhere. You're kind of thinking that the red hot spell of Ruiz was might be just coming to an end, but ultimately still 49 in front in this frame, so he's holding all the aces again. Also pretty good for Ruiz. He might have intended that just to get the pink a little more towards the cushion. Again, it's not a very nice looking table for a player 49 points behind. Balls are not in perfect spots. Don't know how he's feeling. He looks okay outwardly. Doing a lot of thinking, but he's not putting hardly any balls, and that's the biggest problem. I mean, in general, he's a very positive character, very optimistic character, but that's being seriously tested right now, the onslaught that he's having to withstand this evening. It looked for all the world like 8-7 as well, didn't it, until Ruiz had missed that red to the middle. But he's not leaving him any chances. No, I mean, he's played everybody multiple times. He's played all of the greats. He's won himself, but I can't imagine too many players have thrown this much at him over the years. I don't mean anybody. Well, we've seen Wu Yizhen knock all sorts in tonight, and there's another long red available. Yeah, he doesn't have to play it because he's in front.
himself. And when he does that, you can't blame him. One. Well, this is it. And there's another absolutely magnificent ball that he potted there. Six. So, second chance, of course, first started with the fluke. There was nothing lucky about that. Robertson didn't play the best safety, but even so, it was a terrific pot to set up the chance for 8-7. Seven. seven. Well, if you're in the Neil Robertson camp with you know, his family or Joe Perry's coach, you're worried. You, you've got to be worried because it's got beyond a joke for him now. You know, you, you, you expect a bit of a backlash, a player 8-2 down, throwing his arm at a few, but it hasn't really been like that. It's been absolutely pure brilliance. Thanks. And it seems to be the onslaught is not ending here. Yeah, I mean, either, either way now for Neil Robertson, it's going to be memorable. It's either going to be his first ranking title for two and a half years, or he's going to be on the wrong end of one of the best comebacks we've ever seen in a major final. And right now, you wouldn't want to say which one is going to happen. 19. In the frame. The comeback continues. It's five on the spin. This is now anyone's. Eight seven. It was eight nil up on Dennis Taylor. It was beaten, but that was a two day match. Stephen Hendry beat Mike Allett from eight two down, nine eight to win the Masters. I'm 16. Sean Murphy, Weezy same break. turnaround in the Wushy Classic against Ding Jun Wee, but in a ranking event, to win from six down with seven to play would be unprecedented in a final. But Will Yizzer, if he can win the next two frames, will have done exactly that. But as I say, now what's interesting, now that he's got a chance to win this tournament, is can he play with that same freedom? Well, we're going to find out. Neil Robertson determined to get in and stop him from having the chance to do that. Well, that might yeah, not Robinson. matter. You, your eyes were quickly shifting across to see, to see the red where it's gone. So it'll only be the value of that four points. He's not left anything. I mean, look, if you're a snooker aficionado, a neutral, so many are, you know, you just love to see this go eight all and see what happens thereafter, how it'll all unfold. But of course, if you're involved in the Neil Robertson camp, you absolutely do not want to see that. That's the last thing you want on your mind on all this time without winning. And, he gets hit by all this. But eight all would be <laughs> quite something if it happened. Is that sizing up this red? Screwing off the cushion. It's another incredible part. Look at how cl cleanly it went in. It's frightening, isn't it? It really is. Not nicely on the black. Not to get onto a red after it anyway. say he's unlucky not to be cleanly on a red because what is he thinking he's thinking that he never misses and when he does it balls still going somewhere 
Oh, wow. It was a bit of a blur, wasn't it, as that black flew back across the cushion. Here it is again. Yeah, I mean, look, it's easier for someone like me who's, that doesn't play anymore to say that's one shot too many, because in hindsight, it does look like that. But when they go in, we're not saying it. The only thing I would say is he's looking at a plant now, and that is enough to give Neil Robertson plenty to think about if that goes in as well. I don't think he can get to the plant, but he certainly looked at it. Doesn't want to leave it, perhaps. No, he is actually playing safe. And that's what he has to do very occasionally. Easy. And look how well he's done it. Again, this, uh, could have been on an easier red than the one he's left with. But he's not showing any real emotion. He's not waving his arms around or all of the things that come as human nature to most people who play this game. You know, the runners turn horribly against him, as well as everything else that's gone on. played it without any confidence. I know it went in, but look, he didn't at any point think about getting on the black. He just didn't want to leave a red. So it looked nice, but it was not really hurting his opponent. Near Robertson, one. can't imagine that Neil Robertson will want to take any risks here. <clears throat> I think he was always going to do this, just drop up to the Reds. I think you'd be petrified to leave anything on for who he is. If you come around from here, you can see it. Well, he's, given, he's not giving it a touching ball and he's not going to change his touching. mind, Marcel. It's not touching. It's not touching. Possible re wreck if uh, the, the ball stay in this position. There's so much to risk by playing to an expansive a shot. Just be careful he doesn't leave the red to middle here.
Well, as he, as he covered it, as he covered it, he looked straight across at the line. It's mighty close as to whether this ball is available. A bit of tension in Neil Robertson's arm, but I think he just got it far enough. And now Ruiz has got to be equally as careful because the balls are in good positions for the next player to get in. At least he's having a good look at this because this is maybe the biggest shot we've seen so far. He's, I think he's looking at pulling that red to middle past the one close to the pocket, but screwing across and not leaving anything. But even then, it looks incredibly difficult. This is a really difficult shot. No, it's not bad. I mean, there's something that might go, but he's... He's not done too badly there, he's still in this. Well, one thing's for sure, there's a, an absolute pile-on for someone here. The first player to get in. It'll be a frame with the opportunity where the reds are, but who's it going to be? Been an evening of big breaks from this man. This is a tense passage of play, though. Very important one as well. It's a good shot, isn't it? Look, he's blocked off all the reds over on the right side. Neil is he's hardly getting anything to go at, and this has got beyond a joke. You know, he's barely had a pot in live play for, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half of this evening's session. What, Neil will take some consolation. This is a very different sort of a frame now. I value colours up there. Tie it up. Maybe the kind of frame he needs to just scrape over the line. Not open. The open frames. Ruiz has been absolutely devouring, to be honest. I think, he, I think he tried to get blue and pink back in play there. Well, his luck has changed. He's overcut the red to middle. Cannon into that one and it's gone in. What a moment for that to happen. I got one, he said. He's, let's be honest, his opponent's had a few. 
but always with flukes, it's about what can you do from them. Yeah, I mean, they do say that luck evens itself out, which, of course, some people would argue that's not the case, but uh, I think it did there. He was all out to pot a ball, wasn't he? Any ball in any pocket. Well, it's an unconventional table, to say the least, but can Neil Robertson here use his many years of experience to start Seven. building a nice lead? Yeah, he would be eyeing up where that blue is. It, it could be that he can get onto the blue and he'd love it back on his own spot. The, the red that's close to the green spot, he might be able to pot and just land on the blue into the top left and then all of a sudden get this show on the road. Or whichever red he plays, the blue might come into the thought process. Eight. I mean, it could end up a really good chance, this. It's got the colours are a little bit awkwardly placed. One thing I've felt the whole tournament is that his thinking has been excellent, his discipline has been excellent, so that's the frame of mind. He needs to stay in for the next however many minutes it needs to get over the line if he can. Yes, I mean, look, he, he was on the wrong end of some Ten. wonderful potting and, and some pretty cruel luck, but I can think of a lot of players who might have just combusted under those circumstances. He didn't show any reaction. Eleven. When he got his fluke, he just calmly said, I've got one. He kind of knew what he meant. Yes, I mean, over the years, he's demonstrated considerable strength, hasn't he? Strength of character just to come from Australia to leave your family behind as a young man and chase your dream. No money in your pocket. Says a lot about him. I think if he wins now, I mean, I thought this at the start of the night at 7-1, but even more so now, if he wins, this has got to be very near the top of the list of all-time wins for him. You never beat the World Championship, but in terms of what he's gone through, in the last two years and what he's gone through this evening, if he gets there. 18. Yes, well, now he's got that blue free, so this becomes an even better chance. Been upgraded as a proper chance now. In a funny way, this is what he's been missing, isn't it? When he's been sitting out big tournaments, the drama. 23. The thrills and spills of top-level snooker. 24. The only thing I would say is he's taking quite low-value colours, so he's never going to quite breeze away from Ruizu in this frame <laughs> by doing so. So it might take him a lot more pots. Put the match to bed. The green is safe as well, so as he's building a lead that is to his advantage. Thirty three. Few options here because he has got 
to head up the table on the right side. But if he's straight enough on this blue, he might think he can split the two reds below the cue ball now and pop one of them. And of course, the other one then is out in open play also. And he's interested in doing that, getting on that right hand red of the two somewhere where he's queuing. this spot that means blue on the black spot which he won't mind any of this right now the points are mounting up Yes, 41 in front now, with 67 on. 44. He's been able, it seems, so far to focus just on the table as Wu Yizza looks on. What a performance it's been this evening from him. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's really come of age in this match. We knew he was good. We've seen how good he is this week, but what we've seen tonight is on a different level, actually. 45. And he'll come out of it with a lot of credit, even if he does lose, which is looking slightly more likely now. You know, if he doesn't go on and do big things in this game, then I'll be staggered. Well, 47 with the blue. So he's a few balls away now, just plotting the course here. I mean, it's this uncertainty of sport. 7-1, no one really thought this was going to be much of an evening, 50. really. Uh, but it's been fantastic. 51. Here we go, then. This brown would get him sick, would get him 52 in front, with 51 on. Basically, it's another red, isn't it, that he really wants, even though, as you rightly say, it's down to a snooker with this brown going in. Yeah, you're quite right, though. He wants the extra ball. But I think his son has actually left the arena. He was getting too much for him, maybe, but I'm sure we'll see him if Neil can... Pop this ball. This really feels like it is for victory. Oh. If only it were that yeah, straightforward. It feels it rolled off, I think. So one snooker required. The, uh, the black ball is not on his spot. I, I wonder if he even noticed that. Because he probably played on it in such a way as it was. This might not go in. Well, he's still, still in there, still fighting away. Could really do with Eight. getting it down to one red or... To be honest, he could have taken it all the way down we'll use to the colours and, and the green. It's one snooker if you can take high value colours, but then the red up the table with a black would be difficult. So he's just doing what he can. An interesting shot there from Neil because Ruizzo, you'd think, would just push this red down the table. Kind of makes the table look a little bit more friendly for getting a snooker than it was earlier.
It's not worked out too badly. Difficult one, isn't it, for both players? I'm not quite sure how to go about this. <coughs> Neil Robertson, when that fluke went in this frame, he must have been... His eyes must have uh, lit up there. That's the one, isn't it? That is the one. He's not gone in off. And... Extraordinary. And Wu Yuzha more than played his part, but it's Neil Robertson back in the big time. Full of praise for his determined opponent. But Neil Robertson ends a two and a half year wait for a ranking title. He wins an absolute thriller here at the English Open 9-7. that will live long in the memory. You can see the relief. Ladies and gentlemen, £1,000. The trophy and the title. 2024, Bet Victor, English Open champion. He's back, Neil Robertson. Neil Robertson, a great snooker player, but he's also a son, a husband and a father. And how sweet to have his family here with him. I'm sure they never doubted him. I'm sure they kept the faith. And they can enjoy Once these moments. Once again, your champion, All Neil the Robertson. How he was put under it.